Okay, greetings everybody. I'm going to show you a little behind the scenes here at the uh, at my house that I built where um, pretty much all the amplifiers have been built and designed either here or in Palm Springs because um, it takes a long time. And I'm just going to show you a few things here, starting with, I think I teased you guys on one of these videos with this bookcase, the magic bookcase. Um, so let me show you why it's the magic bookcase. Because behind it, oh, look at that. Is that cool or what? Yeah, well, when you're crazy like me and build a house like this, you got to do something like that. Partly because this was a kind of cool little space that was inaccessible except through something like that oh so look here oh it's the mesa home of tone lab here um <laughs> this is it behind the bookcase humble um minimal but it serves my purposes this is just audio amplifiers now again the most crucial part really is goes on up in the tone lounge playing and comparing, sending it down to Texas for Steve Mueller to, for him to do the same. But uh, important step goes on here. This is when things come to life and I build the first prototypes. Uh, yeah, you can see here, I've got a pretty good collection of pretty much every resistor, little capacitor and so forth. Then these boxes over here that look like they're full of junk, well, it's junk except when it's a part that you need and you think it's in there, you dig through this box, oh yeah, hey, there is one there. Okay, this is a 2020, a little stereo power amp from the rack era. It's a cool little thing. Uh, custom transformers is always custom everything. Um, <laughs> and I'm looking at it and, uh, wow, we made, what's the serial number? 4503. So we made 4,500 of those and counting. Oh, signed off by Dalmasio. Now that was a great guy. I'm sorry. He said, it's no longer fun working here. I quit. But here's another thing. This is the traveler card here. This is part of our quality control. And you can see there that, well, maybe you can see that each step, a person who does it signs it and the person who checks it signs it. So, um, Everybody is responsible, and we can tell who did what. Um, and these are lovely people. They, they really, they're instrument builders, and we, we, pre we sort of urge them to think that, that they're building stuff that's precious. It's something that's going to be really important for the musicians and the customers who trust us with their cash and their tone. Now, let me show you a few other things here that I managed to salvage out of, you know, they were, <laughs> they were basically getting tossed. Um, <laughs> and they represent a fair amount of work. Now, this camera is going to have a hard time showing you. But here, with all torn up, is a chassis drawing, and you can see it's hand drawn. <laughs> That's me. And let's go around to the backside of it here. Well... This is an app that didn't get made because, well, they didn't want it. So we never progressed very far with it, but a lot of work, a lot of fun. Okay, now here are some schematics for, um, I believe this is the Lone Star. And this would be how I would start it right there, hand drawn the circuit. Um, and then I found, <laughs> here is the, way I used to do circuit boards. Now, this is a hand-drawn, hand-taped circuit board. This is the before software. This is before computers. This is the way I did it. Now, what you're seeing is going to be hard to hold the camera and show you here. Let me see. Sorry for the jiggling. But it's layers, and I don't even have the registration board, so I'm, they might not be. Okay, so this top piece is the nomenclature and you see it is literally hand drawn now this all goes into a photo lithography and it's funny i took the one of these down to some new photo lab and the guy looked at it and he, he at this pile of stuff and he goes oh my god what now i know why they call it art he said i i i've only dealt with um i forget what they call them the circuit board software programs so, but I never, I, 
that, how, what, what's that type font? And I said, that's hand drawn. And he said, oh, is that a new Apple font? And I said, no, it's hand drawn. He said, what do you mean it's hand drawn? I said, I drew it. And you can see, there it is. It's just drawn with a pencil. And he was like, what? <laughs> You're insane. Okay, so you see, it's layers here. There is the top layer. There's the bottom side of the circuit board. And here are here is the pad master. And there is another piece that's not here. I don't, I don't know what it is that indicates on the pad master what's the diameter and whether it's a plated through hole or not. NP not plated through. Pr pretty much everything we do is plated through. Well, here's a board right here. So, um, and what I mean by plated through is, the, and see, this is hand drawn too. The holes go through. Look at there, the, see around the big tube socket hole, the middle, the big hole is not plated through. The small holes around it are. So that every time there is basically two joints, the top, <laughs> the bottom, and the barrel. Um, it's pretty hard to miss. Okay, so that's the old way. The new way, which I must confess, is way, way better. Here's the picture of the Mark V circuit board, and this is a few years old, but you can see the detail, and what I really like about working on a computer is that you can enlarge these areas um, very simply and really um, be precise. Now, one thing that's really lucky about guitar amps is everything is at 100%. That means it's the real life size. So um, that's convenient. But when you do something as complicated as this and you see some of these really dense places, um, it's really convenient to be able to enlarge it. The other thing that I like about it is that it's really clean with these taped up boards like what I was just showing you the old-fashioned way here um, <laughs> once you keep modifying it was like okay I got the prototype I need to change this I need to add that and pretty soon the glue st doesn't stick very well and then you lose sleepless nights about what if a pad falls off what if a trace moves um, so it's kind of funky any rate I'm glad I caught this stuff and saved it because it was just all thrown in big piles so I don't know. At any rate, that's uh, that's the way it is now. And uh, oh yeah, here's another one. Here's a here's this is interesting because here is the the, the front and back panels of the Mark V twenty five, and and there it is. <laughs> so and so you can kind of see again hand drawn. There's all the dimensions. Calls out the hole diameters, you got the angles, you got the notes, and there's the back panel, and there there is the finished the finished thing. Again, I don't think they I think they discontinued this. Why? I don't know. It's a fucking phenomenal product. Um, but hey, not my company anymore. Uh blah -de blah blah blah. So okay, now you got a pretty good idea of <laughs> just how basic um, reality is here for, for Mesa Boogie. And yet, you know, obviously it works. It's, um, it's old fashioned technology. I'm a geezer, 79 freaking years old and nine months, get out of here. Who would have ever thought that as a, you know, when you hit 80, you cannot pretend that you're not an old man. Hey, and with that, I'm gonna sign off. So thanks anybody that's following this. Um, I sure enjoy reading your comments. Now you've seen a little bit more behind the scenes. I hope you enjoyed it. Catch you later.